Hey guys, Henning and Morten from Flip Normals here. In this video, we're going to be talking about how you can learn any 3D software really fast. Before that, uh, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get notified every single time you put out a new video. Now, this is like the process here is a little different, obviously, from beginners to intermediate and advanced artists, but I think we're going to try and cover it as a topic where we, you know, give everyone a little bit of both or all three if you will sort of like good tips and tricks in all stages that can be applied to everyone yeah there's a huge difference between an intermediate artist who goes from maya to blender or the other way versus somebody who's brand new to 3d and there's a it's really important to recognize the differences there if you're brand new to 3d you're going to be struggling with learning all the fundamentals like the art fundamentals and all that al along with learning the software we are more going to be talking about learning the software here and not so much learning how do you learn lighting or color theory and all that because that's a whole separate topic in the last years uh, i've personally been learning substance painter and blender and you've been learning bl uh, blender yeah, and a bit of Substance Painter as well, mm. but mo mostly focused on, on Blender now, yeah. So it's been really interesting just seeing that you know, with Mort and I being pretty advanced and experienced 3D artists and actually going into two new software which are completely foreign territory to us. The advantage we have is that we were well familiar with both texturing and 3D. And if you go from Mari to Painter or from Maya to Blender, it's kind of the same thing, just with a different interface and a slightly different workflow. The, the tools are mostly called the same thing. It might be called a knife tool to a cut tool or something like that. But you just know that the tool exists and is more about knowing where to find it. It like I feel like it even extends beyond 3D as well. You know, if we even if you're doing something like video editing, for example, or you're editing something in Photoshop, because you've been doing 3D or you might have been doing some art stuff before, you might have an idea of what a specific tool is called. And therefore, you already have an advantage. Like, say, when we were switching to, like, I switched from 3D Studio Max to Maya, like, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago now. And, you know, you go into Maya, I've been using Max for maybe like three or four years. I already know what all the tools are called in Maya or in Max. I can just Google what is bridge tool in mm. Maya. Let's say it had a different name, right? So you already have a huge advantage there. The way I prefer to learn new tools, new software, whatever it might be, is that. I go in and I like to just play around with it as much as possible. When I open a Blender, you know, it's it's intimidating and it, it always is when I learn a new tool. But I just try to do as much as I can. And you break things, you know. Just have any mindset that it's okay to break things. Break you the software. <laughs> break it as much as you can. Worst case, you just got to delete some preferences. And you can easily Google your way out of that. Like, particularly if you, if you learn in Blender, you can just open and cl close it and open again and everything is back to where it was before. I prefer to just go through everything. I, I try to just brute force as much as I can in the beginning. I like to just go in completely fresh without really reading documentation or anything like that. And just for like maybe an hour or two, just, just try to figure out for myself. And, and the reason is because I regard learning software as my responsibility. I don't like to rely on tutorials for it. They should They should more like kind of fill in the holes of my knowledge and help me with specific issues. But I don't like to to start off with, okay, I'm gonna learn through Zero Max. Here is a 10 hour series on learning Max. And by the end of it, I know how to use it. <laughs> that's just not how it works. No, and also like you get distracted, you get bored. You're not gonna remember everything, especially when you're getting started with a 3D software. It doesn't matter which so software it is. They're all very complicated and they can all do a lot of things. Even for us, when we switched from Maya to Blender, there was, you know, we maybe had like a two or three week period where everything still felt very foreign, even though we knew kind of what the tools were, even though we had our experience from Maya and Max, it still took some getting used to getting into that new software. Yeah, that's a, that's a part which is often easy to overlook that it's not just you technically need to learn what tools are, you have the muscle memory part of it as well. And that just takes you time to learn even if you know where all the features are where what everything is called you just need to get used to to the workflow you just need practice with it uh, you have to get to neurological pathways just connect it up and just get everything just sorted now once i've been breaking things for a few hours then i like to get an overview of the software i'm not going to sit and just try to 
learn everything by myself because that is horribly inefficient. Like, if you're trying to figure out how the extrude tool works, sure, you can figure it out by yourself, but why not just watch a tutorial and then you can learn five more things with it. There might be some caveats to, to how to use it. Maybe there are some weird quirks with it, or maybe there is a specific hotkey combination which can just speed it up so much. So I really prefer to get an overview of the software. This can be by reading the documentation. I, when I learned Blender and Substance, I tried to read like as much as, as possible as I could. Uh, and this is just so I can get a really solid overview of the different features. One thing that I do a lot is immerse myself in the content. And I mean, it might seem extreme, but I always try to create an environment for myself where I have the most... Uh, let's say like I have the most opportunity for success. So in, in the case of learning, let's say I was learning substance painter, for example, there I would, you know, do an intro series to sort of like get my, get my bearings with the software. What can be done? What are the hotkeys? All that kind of stuff. Already kind of have a feel for texturing before I started that, but not a lot. Then it's for me, it's about finding videos that I can do that helps me with projects and just immerse myself in tips and tricks videos, put on videos in the background that I listen to. Maybe I'll pick up a tip or two. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, there's that hotkey that can do this. So I can do this with fill layers if I do this in a specific way. So it's just about creating an environment where it's, it's you have the most opportunity to learn. Yeah, one of the ways to do this is I on, on my social medias, I try to follow people who, who do the topic I'm interested in particularly for Blender, I was following a lot of Blender people who, and it helps so much because you have so many small discussions all the time and there might be links to forum threads you never even thought about. They might be talking about specific videos. Really just try to immerse yourself as much as you can. Then I prefer to do projects as soon as possible. Like obviously in the beginning, you just need to, you need to crawl a little before you can walk. But the moment I feel even remotely comfortable with the tools, I'll try to do mini projects. In the beginning, it might be modeling a cup and adding, signing materials to said <laughs> cup, putting up some basic lights and just where do I find the rendering options for it? By doing these small projects, you're kind of forced to take every to go through every single step in the software. I remember when uh, both Mort and I were learning Blender, we had issues just assigning materials in Blender. Like, how do you... How do you do that? Can you just drag it? There are. <laughs> How do you drag it? Where do you drag it from? Yeah, what hotkey know? combination do you use? Is it middle mouse button, right mouse button? In some software, you will just right select the object, right mouse button, and select the material. Here, it's done in a different way. And it's not that it's a right or a wrong way. It's just this is the way it's done. And it's easy to overlook this very specific parts of each software. Like it's easy to say, well, now, okay, now I know how to model, well, shading, then you just assign a shader and then lights, you just assign, you just put up some lights and then render, you just click the render button. Yeah, but where are those buttons specifically? And how do you set the active camera to be here? How do you change the resolution of the camera? Where do you set the render passes? How can you control the samples of, the, of the rendering all these kind of things there are things you just have to you just have to do them and i feel doing mini projects just exposes me to all of those things yeah, because that it's a great way to sort of expand your software horizon where first you do a tutorial on something basic let's say modeling a cup okay now you know how to model a cup but you don't truly know it you just have like an idea of how to do it then what i usually do afterwards is i take that what I just learned, maybe I do it right away or an hour later, or a few hours later, and then I try to replicate it. Maybe I try to replicate it one-to-one -one or put my own little twist on it, but like trying to recall as many of the methods that was used in the tutorial to sort of like store it in my long-term memory or still short-term, but like hopefully on my way to long-term memory. And then I keep alternating between that where I do project, tutorial, project, tutorial, but slowly moving more and more over to doing my own projects. So I think it's something that we talked about before as well, sort of like the, um, the divide between how many tutorials should I do and how many projects should I do. And like in the beginning, I think, you know, it's a, it's a fair split between do a tutorial, do a project, do a tutorial, do a project. And then slowly you want to shift away from tutorials and do more and more projects because that's where you're really forced to do it on your own. It's kind of like when you're out for a walk and you're walking with someone who knows the way, if they know the way, you're not going to pay attention. So you're not going to be able to find your way back again because you're just like on autopilot. It's the same thing with constant tutorials. If you just do tutorials, you have someone telling you the entire way how to do something. 
and therefore you won't remember it as well. So it's very important that you sit yourself down and you start to do it and recall it from memory. Your goal is not to finish the end result of tutorials. Like if you have our introduction to Blender, the goal for you is not to be able to make the exact same lightsaber as we did. The goal is for you to be able to make anything in Blender using the same principles and all that. With the techniques we're showing, you can make basically all hard surface objects and you can shade them and you can light them and you can render them out. That's really what we want you to get out of it. Because if you're if you're just trying to replicate one to one, cool, now you can replicate it one to one. But now you get lost the moment you try to do something by yourself. Yeah, and I think it's important because we got a comment on YouTube not too long ago from a guy who was asking, I think he was inquiring about sculpting and ZBrush. And he was just getting started. I don't know how long he'd been going for, but for a little while. And he'd been watching a lot of tutorials. And he still hadn't gotten started with sculpting. He was like, it was intimidating to him. And he was, he was asking sort of like, how do I actually get started? I watched an intro series. I watched some other stuff. And it's like, how do you get started? Well, the most important thing is that you just sit your ass down and, you know, open the software. It, that's really the most important thing. All the tutorials can wait. Everything else can wait. But the most important thing is that you actually get into the software and start using it. And that's incredibly uncomfortable. Yeah, it is. Like, I remember, like, because it's, it's, it's been a long time since I learned a software from scratch. And that's why I, I think talking about this Blender experience is so good, because I come into it with 12, 13 years of experience in 3D. All of a sudden, I'm like, I'm taken back to nursery school, right? It's just like, okay, you're just a child again, and you don't know anything. Yeah, I have a vague idea of most of the concepts. Well, I have a good idea of all the concepts, but I don't know the specifics of tools. And it's an incredibly frustrating thing, especially if you're already at an intermediate or advanced level, where it's like, well, I could just jump back into Maya and I could model this sword and it'd be perfect. And instead in Blender, I spend three hours trying to make a box that's a little longer than it was supposed to be so it is frustrating in the beginning but that just means that your brain is like it's trying to work out the problems because that's what your brain is excellent at that you know your brain doesn't want to be uncomfortable so if you put it in a position where it is uncomfortable then it's going to start trying to figure out how to get out of that situation yeah, it's really interesting what you're saying because I I have the same thing where I, I need to model like something stupidly simple in Blender. I'm like, I can just do it in Maya <laughs> and then I open Maya and I do it in like two seconds there. But now I defeated the entire purpose of this because I'm my the purpose here wasn't to build this little toy sword or whatever. It was to learn how to do it in Blender. So now I'm just stuck with not having learned Blender, but now I have a toy sword <laughs> in Maya. <laughs> so there's no purpose to this whatsoever. Now there is a purpose to this though if you are in production or if you have to do something real quick and you get thrown into another tool like if you, you if i was thrown into using i had was forced to use blender in a production and i could do most things there and then i might go into maya occasionally just to fix some things here and there but but in general you really want to stick as much as possible to the main software right 100 percent to in the main software we're going to do Another thing as well, which is super important, is to have some kind of support network around you as well. Uh, I really find it useful if I have some people who I just know I can ask questions. It doesn't even have to be very advanced people. Like if, you, if you're learning Maya and you have somebody who's been using Maya for a year, they're going to be able to answer basically all of your questions. It doesn't have to be some crazy veteran developer of 3D software or something. As long as they know the issues you have, they're going to be able to help you. I, I can't express how useful that was to me when I was learning uh, Blender. Uh, then we have we have the Flip Normals Discord, and I also have uh, I also have Twitter. And just asking on Discord and Twitter, like asking the questions, asking questions I had there, and you get an answer in like a few seconds back. It just speeds up my learning so much. It can also just it's a good place for you to vent your frustration as well, <laughs> because you are <laughs> going to be very frustrated in the beginning, and sometimes rightfully so. Sometimes the software is just missing the feature you've been using for you know ten years, and you don't know how to work without it. And then the community can really just you know try to figure out what problem are you trying to solve, and then find alternative ways of solving the problem, or you know give you shit for wanting a feature in a program. <laughs> there is also that as well. <laughs> It's just really important to me that at least you have some people you can ask for for help. Uh, ideally, direct people you can just message. Uh, if not, then just a community like a forum is also really helpful. And I really just can't stress how important the point is. Do more projects 
than you're watching tutorials. Really just spend the vast majority of your time, at least after a few days or a few weeks, just doing projects. If you just keep watching tutorials, you're just gonna keep watching tutorials. Yeah, that's what you get better at. You get better at watching tutorials. You don't get better at, at doing 3D. So it, it, that's why it's so important to get out of that comfort zone of tutorial land. It might be nice and you might feel like you're learning something, but the problem is if you're not actually executing, you know, what you've just learned, then it's not going to stick with you. Then in like two weeks, you're going to have, you're going to forget everything and it's basically going to be worthless. Uh, on that note as well, I prefer to write down everything I learned. I, I know that when I'm learning something, even though the learning might seem logical that, oh, the extrude tool is on the E key and the bridge tool is on the B key. No, you're going to forget that. <laughs> and you're going to forget all the things because you are being bombarded barded with information like when learning blender i took something like 30 pages of notes within a few days mm -hmm. and even when you're in the moment you think that oh, this makes sense I, I forget this kind of stuff all the time really quickly because it's just short-term memory it need you just have to keep using tools over and over again and then after a while you end up with the with the opposite problem that now you know the tools so well that you can't just write them down because it's in your fingers and you kind of gotta in order to know how to, what the hotkey is you just gotta do an extrusion and see what your hand just did. That's the level you kind of want to get to, where it becomes so second nature that you don't even need any notes or any t any tutorials or anything like that. And then after that point, you're ready to give people advice about how to learn a 3D software really <laughs> fast. <laughs> exactly. So learning a 3D software is just very daunting. Yeah. They're they're not small, trivial apps to learn. Like if somebody tells that learning a 3D software is easy. They, they haven't really learned the 3D software. It's frustrating and it's time consuming. And there isn't really a way to mitigate that. You have to train your brain into a whole another system. Like you have to train your muscle memory to be able to do tasks you haven't done before. And sometimes it's not even about just translating your skills. Sometimes it's about learning a whole new paradigm of skills. Like if I were to learn Houdini now, it's not just where is my extrude tool in Houdini. It's a whole different mindset. If you're learning, if you're learning ZBrush, it's not about learning ZBrush. It's about learning sculpting, and that's that's a task which is just it's just huge. So realizing this that it is uncomfortable in the beginning really helps me, because then at least I know that it's a it's an overcomable task. It's an achievable thing to learn, and when you're uncomfortable, you are learning. Yeah, I guess I mean that's that pretty much covers it. It's it's a daunting task. It will take a it will take a while. There is no magic pill. You just have to sit down and for the love of everything that's holy, don't do too many tutorials, which I guess is kind of paradoxical seeing as that we sell tutorials and make tutorials about how to learn a 3D software really fast. Yeah, you should definitely watch, definitely watch <laughs> all of those. Stuff. So you should definitely watch Introduction to Painter and <laughs> Introduction to Blender. <laughs> but it is important to do your own projects and that that's really how you know, you're going to get better. So with all that said, Thank you guys so much for watching and if you want to see more of these kinds of videos make sure to leave a comment down below like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one thank you so much for watching if you're looking for training or high quality assets make sure to stop by the flip normals marketplace and if you're interested in supporting us by buying our merchandise you can check that out in the description below